Hi, welcome to the trailer video T2, Popping the Science Bubble. This video is for everyone. All modern science is built on a crumbling foundation caused by a circular definition. First, I'm going to explain what a circular, de circular definition is so everybody can follow along. A circular de definition is something defined in terms of itself, like saying, well, red is red, obviously. Well, that's not a definition. That's just saying red is red. That doesn't tell me what red is. Okay, that's the same thing as defining x as x equal to x. Even x equal x plus 1, that even can't happen because that would be an inequality. Or x equal x times y, also an inequality for any value other than y, equal, or for, for y other than 1. Now, the simple test to see if something is a circular definition is to do a mathematical operation on these to see if you can remove the x from both sides. That's how you test for a circular definition. And in this case here, you just subtract x from both sides and you get 0. Again, this one you subtract x from both sides and you get 0 equal to 1, which is inequality. And this side you can divide both sides by x and you get 1. And so you, the definition of x falls out. And that's a way to test for a circular definition. Now, scientists and engineers know when a derivation is performed which results in something like x equal x, something was done wrong. You, you ended up substituting the same equation twice. Or the logic of the derivation was just plain wrong. The only time a result of x equal x is desirable is when you're checking to see if two expressions are equal. That's the only time. So this problem begins in the horse and buggy footprint, or the horse and buggy era, which is around circa 1700. There was the original definition of energy, okay, which follows this integral here. But what we're going to do to keep things simple, keep the math as simple as possible, we're going to do the trivial case where the force is constant over the distance of travel, and the direction of the force and the distance are parallel. And that way there, we, we can use a trivial definition of energy, which is valid in this context, which is simply uh, energy is equal to force times distance. Okay, and energy force times distance is, is the units of joules. And if we take force and substitute force with mass times acceleration, well, that's equal to joules as well. So those are both the same. So we're, this is, we're going to use the MAD definition of energy, which is essentially the normal definition, but we like to call it MAD just for fun. Okay, so fast forward to the nuclear age, circa 1900. Scientists concluded that matter and energy were interchangeable. That's where we get Einstein's e equals mc squared. And what they like to do in a lot of things these days, especially with quantum mechanics, is they like to substitute mass out by replacing it with you know, energy over C squared so that they can talk strictly in terms of energy. Okay, they do this with the electron volt. Okay, so mass is the electron volt, or, I mean, sorry, or energy is the electron volt, and mass is the electron volt divided by C squared. Now, you might think, well, they figured this whole problem out. There's no circular definition. Everything is defined in terms of energy. No, the energy here, the, the units here are joules, which are still mad. This is still a definition which requires mass to be part of the definition. They haven't done anything. All they've done is put lipstick on a pig. You can check it out yourself. So let's, let's do what they do. Let's take mass... Which, and, and from e equals mc squared, divide, uh, solve for mass and substitute mass into the, the correct definition, the trivial definition for energy. So we we could switch mass out. Okay, so basically we're taking mass here and we're substituting this equation, which arrives at this. And then look what we got there. There's your circular definition. Energy, divide both sides by energy, and you get the circular definition. So, my friends, present day science is built on a circular definition which is ambiguous and meaningless. Now, what does this ambiguity mean? Well, we have to consult the rules of acquisition for this. Rules of acquisition are very specific about what an ambiguity means. An ambiguity, this is uh, the cover page from the uh, video, the rule of acquisition video called the ambiguity tell, which is rule of acquisition 17. And the ambiguity in model theory indicates that the model theory is a special case of a more fundamental explanation. In other words, what we have may still be useful, but the 
ambiguity due to the circular definition means it's not the most fundamental description of the phenomenon. Now the part that's revised is this part here. I had a little bit of confusion in the grammar before. This is the corrected grammar for this little part here. And the reason why you get the ambiguity is because some information was lost somewhere or certain information or knowledge has not been yet gained. Because mass and energy are considered interchangeable, the definition of energy is ambiguous. And modern science does not know what mass or energy are. They're just scalar quantities and equations. It's all they're treated as is scalar quantities. And this is true for quantum mechanics, relativity, Newtonian mechanics, and Maxwell's equations. But light offers us a clue. Huh. They've had the clue, but they totally ignored it. Light carries energy. However, physicists claim the photon has no mass. So if a massless construct can have energy, then there must be a more fundamental definition of energy that does not require mass. And another clue is in the result. This is the stuff that is the precipitate out by getting mass and energy out of the equation. This would be the difference between the two. And distance, velocity, acceleration are the signature of a second order system. Nature abounds with second order systems. So let me give you the bottom line up front. How I arrived at the bottom line can be found in the new energy paradigm which will be found at the Patreon site, Ethereal Mechanics, which is going to be www.patreon.com Ethereal Mechanics. Uh, this here. Here's the bottom line. The new definition of mass, which it's not mass. Okay, let's get rid of mass. It's really inertia. Okay, inertia. Inertia is going to be the. I've decided on the name of the burl, burliness, heaviness, which is going to be q squared per meter. The unit of energy, which is going to be square current meter. Um, yeah, square amp meter. I was thinking of squameter for that. And the new unit for force is just going to be the square ampere, or squamp for short. Now the solution is clear. Force, energy, inertia are just states of a second order system of charge. Force and energy no longer depend on mass. Okay, 20 years ago, you can read this. I'm not going to read that for you before. How the new units relate to the horse and buggy definition. If you take all of the new new units and multiply them by km, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 7, you end up back at the SI units. Now, before jumping to the conclusion, oh, there's nothing different here, they're only off by a constant. Well, here's the big difference. Okay, these units reflect the underlying system. Okay, they're just the units. They're not the system. These are just the units of the system. For all the other sciences, it ends here. All they have are these scalar quantities that they throw out in equations. These units here, even though they're off by a constant, these represent the underlying system, where it's impossible to see the underlying system from here because they're masked by this arbitrary constant. And I'm going to say this again. So some of you are thinking that if it's only different by a constant, there's nothing new here. It's only the units that are different by a constant. The constructs are night and day. See the next page. See, in the horse and buggy thinking, Mass and energy are just scalar quantities. For example, if the leptons, if a lepton has a different mass than another lepton, then it's assumed to be a different type of particles because we think if it's got different mass, it must be an altogether different particle. Where in ethereal mechanics, inertia, not mass, inertia, which what we call mass is really inertia, is just a state of the system. And therefore, it's possible to have the same system with three different states of how it spins to give you three different masses. And therefore, and this goes back to EMV 38 where I said there has to be, we have to get rid of mass. And so we scientists have to stop playing with blocks. They know an object has mass, which is really inertia. But they don't know what mass is. I know it's inertia. They know it has charge, but they don't know what charge is. They just have these scalar quantities that they float around in all the equations. They know it has spin. They don't really not sure really what spin is. They gave it a name. That doesn't mean they know anything.
So the first time in history, the units of the physical quantities actually reflect the underlying system. Arbitrary definitions like kilogram and arbitrary constants like km disappear. And instead of mass, a system now has inertia in the units of burls, and the unit of burl is square coulomb divided square coulomb per meter. Very simple units. So how deep does the rabbit hole go? Well, the development of ethereal mechanics and new energy pyramids is available only on the Patreon site, but there are videos available if you look at the T0 trailer of generally where everything came from, and you can check out the T0 trailer, which gives you an overview of this. So what will this mean for the average person? The survival of the human race and the Earth. And you can see my other video, T1, Break the Light Barrier or Perish which basically says unless we can break the light barrier by a factor of 500, there is no way the human race is going to persist and survive. And what will this mean for scientists? Well, I'm going to give you the speculation on the next page, but I'm going to give you a warning. The new energy paradigm is so simple that it could be understood by a high school advanced physics student or advanced placement physics student. At least take a look. If I'm wrong, there's no harm done. If I'm right, you need to get ahead of this thing before the next wave of graduates become your bosses. How will science fare? Well, quantum mechanics is going to become obsolete overnight. We can't keep treating physical properties as arbitrarily scalars that just make your equations work. Now we can understand what inertia comes from, what energy is, all this stuff, what matter is composed of. It may not be really what it is, but at least we get a model to help us get deeper into the rabbit hole. Relativity is, going to be, relativity is going to become obsolete. Because here's the problem between relativity and quantum mechanics. Okay, relativity is the science of the large. And they talk about matter as just a constant in their equation which produces gravity, this field that they model with their space-time fabric. And this space-time fabric affects other matter. But how can you have this theory where you have no understanding of what your matter is. You just treat it like this amorphous blob. This amorphous blob creates this gravitational field or disturbs the fabric of space-time and then reacts to the fabric of space-time and you don't know what it is. And then now you have quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics has tries to understand matter, but really their matter is just a collection of scalar properties that they tried to do all the statistical modeling on, but there's no model for gravity. So gravity is like everywhere in the universe, yet quantum mechanics has no understanding of it. it has no, they, they, I think they're just now getting into the boson, which is supposed to have something to do with that, but I think that stuff is all gibberish, to be honest with you. Okay, Newtonian mechanics is going to have heavy re revision. Maxwell's equations are already obsolete. You just go to my foundation series, you're going to see I can tear Maxwell's equations through, you know, buttholes. String theory might actually benefit from this, but I doubt for long. And new electromagnetism is going to come out with a new release using the new units. And obviously this development is for ethereal mechanics, so ethereal mechanics is improved by this. So thank you. Please subscribe to my Patreon site to support this important work. Your survival may depend on it. See T1 video. And you can subscribe to Patreon.com ethereal mechanics. Uh, to get an overview of ethereal mechanics, see the new channel trailer T T0. And please give this video a thumbs up. Let me know how you think of what's in this video. And plaster this link to this video everywhere you can. Tell everybody about it. We need to start getting the word out on this because, again, survival of your family or the earth may depend on it. Thank you very much.